What's up guys and welcome to my video. Now this video is a simple guide to PC cooling. When you're choosing your PC it's really important to consider cooling because it's all very well having all these different components in your PC but if your cooling's not sufficient enough then not only are your components not going to run as efficiently as they could but they're going to run louder and in some cases they may not actually work to their full potential at all. The first consideration is to know what sort of system you're trying to build. Are you after a budget PC? Are you after a really, really quiet PC? Or are you after a really, really high performance overclocked PC? And it depends what sort of PC you want it to be, then what sort of cooling you'll need to cool that PC. Now there are two main types of cooling. There's air cooling, and then there's water cooling. Air cooling is the most common cooling solution, and it's also the cheapest cooling solution. Now the way air cooling works is that it conducts all the heat from your component, so your processor, straight into a heat sink and this heat sink has a very very large surface area and all this heat is drawn up into the metal from the processor and then you have a large fan or multiple fans that will then blow air over this heat sink and all the heat will get carried away into your case and then your case fans will then blow this heat out of the case and this will result in your cooling solution. Now water cooling is similar but a little bit more complicated. And the way it works is that your heat from your component, let's say your processor, is drawn up into a water block and then that water block transfers all the heat into your tubing which is filled with your coolant which is normally distilled water and then a flow of distilled water is then taken away from your component and into a radiator. And this radiator again has a large surface area and then again you've got fans that will blow against this large surface area and will blow all the heat outside of your case. Now water cooling is more efficient and this is just because liquids do a better job of transferring heat than air does and so by using a water cooling system you can get more heat out of your case in a shorter space of time and this also means that you won't need to use as much air so you can have your fans on a lower RPM which means less noise than you would with an air cooling solution but it is more expensive and it is a little bit more complicated. Now air cooling is much more common but if you are looking for a solution that's a bit more advanced and will give you extra performance then water cooling is definitely the way to go. Now water cooling is either available as a sealed one box kit. This is a lot easier to maintain as you don't really need to maintain it at all and it's very easy to install and in some cases it is a lot cheaper. But as a much more advanced system there's the DIY approach and this involves getting all the components you want yourself and this way it means you can call additional things like your RAM or your GPU as well as getting a much quieter and overall better performing system but this is much more expensive and is quite complicated to set up especially if you've never done it before. So to sum up, air cooling is the best if you want a budget system. It's the cheapest and in some cases if you're not going to overclock it is very quiet as well. But water cooling is the better cooling solution. It is a bit more expensive but it is worth it if you think you're going to be overclocking or if you want a really really quiet system with the extra performance of some overclocking. But if you want the best which is a silent super overclocked rig then a DIY water cooling kit is the only way you're going to be able to do it. You're going to have to buy all the components yourself. You can get them in a kit that will give you all the different components you need but if you're really serious you should do some shopping around and look at what the best components are and different GPUs require different GPU blocks and it does get a bit complicated but if you want the best that's the approach you're going to have to take. Thank you very much guys for watching this video. If you want other videos like this and other computer videos, other simple guides then subscribe to PC Centric. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.